Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Accept the minutes as amended. So moved. 
Second. Alan seconds it. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Everybody. Warrants were signed by everybody. <clears throat> that was done. So I guess we'll move right into the highway report, Danny. You want to discuss the culprit first, I guess? <laughs> Uh, Phil on Heath's work is one that is, we get the state money for, the 110, but we have, we won't know on the other grant for that until like April or May. I think Bill is just wondering about putting that out to bid now so we can get it done this coming season. Um, either way, we have to use that 110 this coming season, so either it's not to come out of the capital budget if we don't get the um, Better Back Roads grant to match with it, or... What's the total cost of that? One seventy-five. One seventy-five. It's that's estimate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but there's no downside to bid it up now, is it? Uh, no, I would no, I would bid it now. I mean, so you get on the work schedule. I'd like Hardy to address that if you can. Okay. I had it in the capital budget. Got one hundred and ten coming. Nothing there, and we put enough money in to cover almost all of the one seventy-five. So. I would say you did it because that was the plan. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no downside. Yeah. I don't, I don't see it. I'll make that motion. Though. Okay. Wait, wait a minute. I just didn't understand. So, even without anything from B Trans, we had money in capital budget. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. We planned for this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Stan made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Right now. Any, any other discussion? <coughs> any further discussion on the <coughs> COVID issue? Okay. So, all in favor of Having Danny bid out the culvert on the Glee Brook number eight, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> okay. Uh, let's go to the excessive weight permit. Thing. Uh, you have the three, and I put in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have them put together, and then there's a single one, right? Does that include the, the new ones for the logging? Yes, it does. So that's a uh, town. And then I want, besides approving him, I want you to authorize me to sign them. So it is, uh, it's Velco, uh, Newport Sand and Gravel, which is also part of concrete. And then for the logging, it is townhouse trucking, field and Townhouses, it's Jody Town, the townhouse, and uh, I'm, uh, I don't have this, and the money for all of them, I don't have this insurance certificate uh, for, for him, but it is, uh, it's, it will be sent. They're going to make sure you're going to try it. And he won't be hauling across the bridge for a little while. Here you go. Is everybody satisfied with that? Do we need a motion to have you sign the bill? Or yes, I need a motion for you to approve them and then to allow me to sign them. we we'll make that motion. Okay. Do we have a second? A second. Yes, second. Any further discussion? So all in favor of the weight of approving the weight permits and having bill signed, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, I guess we'll go right into the VTrans town map discussion. We got uh, the cat. Yeah, but, um, oh, yeah, the cat, where the hell is that? First one. First one. First one. First one. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't have it on my agenda, that's why, because this is, must have been updated again. That's <laughs> why. That isn't my fault. But no, I know, I printed up four of them, so I guess it's, all right, so let's do that. So let's, let's do the, the cat one. Um, as I understand it, talking to Bill, the lease, uh, you can't change it, you can't amend it, you can't do anything. And so we, we need a, a motion to suspend reading the whole thing. So the only thing that we need to do is have a motion on who's going to sign it, whether it be a Bill or myself. Well, I, approve I, it. I want to be really clear on that motion. I want you to move that uh, page that has the where of it. The wherefore to the end, whereas, whereas, whereas the yeah. laws of the state of Vermont, 
all that little print and resolve <coughs> and that you're naming me as town administrator to sign the uh, documents uh, and uh, and then Kim will um, will, will um, state that those were that this motion as it is written right here was adopted by you at this meeting so I want, I want to be clear that's what I need from you because that's what cat wants from us they need to make sure that you but you agreed to this purchase You've already agreed to the purchase in September 2nd meeting, uh, but it didn't have all these details. And so this is what they want. And I just want to tell you a little bit about the, the contract so that you can have a little bit of understanding about it. Um, it is uh, 23,197 per year for, uh, so the first payment is this year and then four more payments at the end, I'm sorry, um, you know, I pay Mr. Name is a payment of one dollar. When you pay the one dollar, it's ours. <laughs> uh, that those payments add up to not 107, but they add up to um, like 115 because there is 3.87 percent uh, interest on that the whole time it's going through. If at any time you are <laughs> stating in the contract that you can't intend to stay in business for more than the length of this contract, and actually to use it and pay for it. But that if something were to happen and you go out of business, then uh, you can turn you can terminate this lease provided you give them six, 60 days written notice and return it to them. They will then, the rest of the lease is forgiven, but you have to do it on the anniversary day, not the 60 days has to be 60 days before the anniversary day. The anniversary date will be uh, today, hmm. okay, and, and it's paid every year on this date without them billing you. I'm sure they're going to remind us, but, but they say they're not, okay, and so uh, that's it. Uh, uh, what else? Um, You're going to keep it insured, and you identify if, if somebody uses that tractor to run over somebody, Caterpillar is not responsible. <laughs> okay, I'm going to it. And um, <laughs> we can't transfer it to anybody else. Okay, I think that's about the highlights of the, of the small print on those other four pages ahead of this page. So, is it currently under our insurance? Has it been insured? Yes, it is here. So, yeah, it's a better. 8th of January. Okay. I have that certificate from Kim. Do we have the increase of that insurance on this? Pardon me? Will we have an increase on the insurance? I have no idea how the insurance works. Lots of times in the insurance, they, it probably doesn't. I, I don't know if Kim would know. <coughs> insured through PAT or insured through VLCT? It's passive. Yeah, it's, it's passive um, it's insurance policy, and that's why I'm wondering it may or may not, they may not itemize it. They, you need to have an itemization, but I don't know that they charge you by it. You probably have an umbrella. I don't know. Sure sure sure. I make a motion that we authorize Bill to sign the document and follow the stipulations. Okay, no, you've got to adopt all the words on that page as your motion. <laughs> so adopt the whereas, correct? Yeah, the whereas the all the way through the bottom. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But just a minute, so you did not starting that whereas through the through the bottom of language. Oh. All right. You don't need to read the whole thing, right? right. Uh, attachment B, starting at whereas. <laughs> and then Bill Kearns has the authority to sign for it? Correct. Yeah. No. In the middle there, where it says who is going to sign for it, it will be William G. Kearns, town administrator. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a second to the motion? I'll say. Okay. Do we have any other discussion on the, on the lease other than what was cut most? <coughs> If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 
Um, so I see Kim signed it already, Bill, with copy mine. Is that so? She'll have her sign it again. Is that right? Ask Kim. Yeah, I will. Kim, there was a question on the insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, because you're ins we insure in a, a second piece, of, another piece of equipment, mm -hmm. is there an additional cost or is it going to a blanket? Oh, we'll probably get an additional cost sent to us for an addition. Okay. But it's already on the policy. I put it on the policy already. This is the listing on the policy. <coughs> and it's uh, January 8th through... Uh, one one twenty twenty one, and Cass will get a copy of that in this contract. I'm assuming it's required to be sent. <laughs> All right, so let's let's finish up the truck bid, and then we can get onto the road. So, who has that? Uh, Chris, you want to open it up? Now, I sent I sent bids to four companies, um, and this is the only one we got back from uh, R R Charleboy. Is that the name of our charter boy out of Northern Vermont? They sent a refusal to bid. They think this, but they didn't want to bid. They're too far away. And uh, the other two people, uh, the other two uh, companies did not answer. So everybody knows this is the replacement of the little uh, freight liner truck that, uh, that they use. We have to have because we can't get over the bridge. So it's, uh, it's cost us. What, Danny, we're about $7,000 so far, I think? Yeah. Already, the, just the this, year, this winter, right now, it's almost nine. Yeah. And they had a and cooler line that they had to do this last time around <clears throat> that hooks to the radiator, which is plastic, and get the fitting out the broken radiator so they put a radiator in it. The exhaust was all warranty. That was $4,000. That was warranty. Um, and then we had some ABS problems with it. That they worked on. We had last year. We had problems too. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. tried to buy a truck earlier, but there's just not av nothing available. Should we? Should there be at any time start considering to do a, a five-year program on those trucks rather than seven? I mean, how does that do to the? I've asked for that. We looked into for many years. I think it's something the capital budget maybe needs to take a look at next year. Uh, because what happens to your trade-in from the five-year to a seven-year? It, well, I know, but is it is it is it substantial? Yeah, yeah. Because if you go with a five year, you <laughs> have two to three years of some warranty left, so it brings the value up. So when we trade them, this actually that freight liner, the warranty is off at five years. That's the longest you could buy at that time. Mm -hmm. So if you can sell it at five years with three years of warranty, it really, you know, whatever's mine, it covers all your major components, most of them. This was a Cummins in this little truck, which five years was a max. The truck that is supposed to be fit is supposed to be a Detroit engine, which is supposed to be one heat seven. So, so this is the seventh year of that yes. truck? Yeah. Going into the what do you imagine we put in it for the two years from five to seven to keep it on the road? I probably around 15,000 in two years. Anyway. Last year was the EGR cooler, which was not warranty. I think that was like thirty five hundred for that. They get hundred and thirty dollars an hour down to the work on them, so it adds up fast. Have we gotten the warranty packages in the past? We try to buy what the, the maximum they offer. Okay. Um, and it's always you take the salesman's word on what it is. <laughs> It's supposed to be all in this bit too of the options. Right. But I actually want to take the win. I don't want you to decide on this tonight, no matter what it is, because I want to go down to the service department and ask them what the warranty is. And it seems to be two different things that you find out one from the salesman and one from the warranty office. And I want to make sure that they are offering the match you can get on that truck. Because we found out that the 2000. 18 or 19, the last 10 wheel we bought, that there was a better package you could have bought, but after six months you can't, you can't help it. And we just found out with some of the work we've done to that, that we didn't have the best warranty from at that time. Just to back up a little bit on the top of warranty, what about the cat warranty? 
that. On the estimator? Yeah. That was seven year warranty, and I think the thing is seven years that they service it too for that price. So they're up, they do all the oil changes and everything for the seven years. I think it's based on two a year and the warranty for just seven years on all, except for what they call wear items. So can you explain again the maintenance that was just done? I know we signed the warrants for them. What did you say about the radiator? The cooler lines for the automatic hook into the bottom of it. So it's a plastic radiator, most all the ones are now. Mm -hmm. When they tried to take the line out of it, they threw hmm. the plastic. Because hmm. it's a steel line that goes into the plastic radiator. So we had to put a new radiator in it. So is that their cost or our cost? Mm -hmm. Our cost. We're hiring them to work on it. But they broke it. <laughs> when you take your car to someone to have it worked on and they break a lug nut, you pay to have it fixed. It's no different. I don't think that's fair. It might not be fair. It's the way it is. All right, Chris, you want to read the bid? A bid from uh, ATG Patriot to the town of Grafton. Thank you for allowing ATG Patriot the opportunity to provide you with a proposal on a 2021 Freightliner M2106 cab and chassis. Price is as follows. For the 2021 Freightliner, single action proposed price, $99,000, $99,119. Uh, for the uh, Viking City body equipment package, an additional $71,900 for a total sales price of $171,019. There will be a, an allowance for a trade-in for the 2013 Freightliner of $25,000, which will bring the net down to a total for the chassis and the um, body equipment package of $146,019. There is the option for a, a warranty package, um, engine, truck coverage, axles, towing, um, totaling, the total warranty package would be 8155 for the um, full warranty, ex extended warranty package. So that would be 8155 in addition to the net sales price of 146000 Is there a delivery time? <coughs> Do you know what the, the thing they ever tell you? Do you know what the delivery times are? No. Okay. Well, they, they, um, it's going to really depend on the body company. That would be, if you, were, if they, you approved it today, it, it could be a year out before you see the truck. Mm -hmm. In the past, when we've gotten a bid, we've asked Danny to review it. Oh, yeah. And he'll make a recommendation to us um, at the next meeting. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, we, we used to be reviewed by Danny. And, uh, any other questions on the truck or the bids? Okay. All right, so now I guess we'll hit the road here. But, uh, Bill, do you want to start on the road situation or explain what's got to happen? Or? Yes, please yeah, put. Before we go, Danny, do you have any other any other things you want to talk about? Uh, no, there we're just going to be, uh, we got some co-patch in in the last week, so we can patch some of the black top up. We've been cutting the brush, started up on the fire pond, we're going to finish up that road. Um, that's it, we might have some weather toward the end of the week. Do it. Okay, Bill, go ahead. Does everybody have more information? The packet on the yes. Yes.
think uh, the, uh, the discussion started when I heard uh, mass people talking about they, someone was putting a, a gate somewhere in this area on this road, and they wanted to know how could they put it in there if it's a public road. And it's interfering with the mass trail. You know, I'm not being really exact on this. You guys can correct me later if, if I did get it straight. But I'm just going to give the general what happened. So I went back to the map. This is, this is taken from their old uh, ancient road maps. Now, none of these are ancient roads. To be an ancient road, and everybody gets this confused, to be an ancient road, it has to not ever have been a road. Hmm. But laid out by the select board, see, yes, we want it there, and then it was never put in. So you never, you don't see any rocks, you don't see any trail, you don't see nothing. It just, it just woods, and obviously never any road there. Okay, that's an ancient road. Ancient roads went away four or five years ago. If you didn't claim them four or five years ago, you were done. Okay, these roads have always been there. I am told, and I asked Mooney to come tonight because he knows the roads are probably the one. You probably know them, and a lot of other people in this room probably know those roads too. Uh, these road, I'm told, actually exist from just short of, of the driveway into Jackie's house. This road goes up uh, and then comes across and ends approximately here. This road goes from Hall Ranch Road and from uh, about where Hall lived to the intersection. This is according to the, to the description. And this one went from Hall Ranch Road down to somebody's barn. Uh, the distances on them are, uh, in rods, are almost exactly right. Mm -hmm. This is this is almost 2,000, this is about 1,200, and this is, well, I have a, it's easier to get given miles, it's a 0.73 miles, this is down mm -hmm. here. And that is adding up each one of these segments here, but, and, and the same with these from the descriptions, you will find this description in uh, um, Book of Layouts, number 30. You'll find this, this description in Book 2A at, at that page, 279 or something like that. And then this is Book of Layouts 23, 1780. Now this one, this Book of Layouts, of 1780. This road starts at the Rockingham Town Forest, and I can show you a map. I have another map here. I can show that to you. Goes all the way through here, goes back all the way through town, comes back up Fisher Hill Road, and ends on Fisher Hill Road at the quotes Grafton Northern Town Line. So I don't know how, but that's what that's what the map says. So. Anyway, but that's not what we're interested in. All I'm interested in here is that it takes off from here. But it's from here. It goes from here. This is Otis Road. As it comes in from Chester Road, this is Otis Road. This is where Jackie's driveway is. It takes off before it. Goes up, comes across, meets these roads that are on the ground at this intersection. Then this road starts at Hall Ranch Road, comes down in a curve, goes to that intersection, and this road comes down from Hall Ranch to there. And they are described in, in, the, in those places that I told you. In order to, now, you'll notice on this map, just as an aside, I'm not talking about them tonight, you know, is this road here, all these roads here? This is uh, the rest of Otis Road. This is on our town map out to about there. Why these roads were on here and why I can't find a description in the book of uh, layouts or in the town records, I don't know. I can't answer that. And, and Rooney might be able to answer that. But I can't answer it. And uh, we may be able to put uh, them back on the road, but I've got to have to find the description. If we wanted to put them back on the map, but I have to find a description because VTrans will not accept it if I can't find the actual layout approved by the select board. Mm -hmm. No matter what you find on De Beers, that might be playing on, on all these maps, you can find a thousand years of maps. If it's if you can't find a layout, it doesn't exist. We do know these haven't been thrown up. 
So what I <coughs> told the people that were interested in this is what I, that I would do is set this up so that if the select board wants to put him back on the maps, I would have enough information. They tell me what roads they want me to tell the transport back on the maps, and I can put them back on the maps. One thing, and I don't have a dog in this bike. This road, and I have another picture I can show you. This road goes right through the middle of somebody's property. <laughs> if no one cares about that road, you just might say, we don't care about that road, and we don't put it back on the map. Because hmm. Mr. Logan might not be happy. I don't know. He isn't here. Everybody whose name is on hmm. this other map, I'll show you, have all been written a letter. Everybody got a letter about what's happening tonight. And I have heard from nobody. Okay, except for the people in town. A lot of the vast people got it by email. But those people I wrote were out of state, which include, included the Ellsworth, the people that own this property down here, which is uh, Paul Brook, which is Ellsworth property, and uh, Logan and John Stone and all the people. None of the people. Logan it's not there. Logan, it's me. <laughs> you, I'm number two. But who owns it over here? I don't know who owns it there, but I have the His name is still on it. Is that, uh, it's Jacob. Jacob owns it. You own Jesse's section. Right? Yeah, but that'd be where the number two goes. That's right where my camper is. I think it is. Well, I'm assuming. You're pointing in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Where the orange is is where Johnstone. That's not the okay, let me That's put another, Let me put another map up. Mm -hmm. Regardless, one and three are really what we want to have on the map. And if you're going to do that, I say right now, if you want to do that, I would suggest that you put this back as one road. Um, as what? As one road. Oh. Don't, don't put them back separate. Just, just for your information, that number one that's drawn on there. Yeah. It's, that's not the trail that you're using. Where is that? It's part of it. I know. It's part of it. But, but where that turns, it comes out right opposite of where my road to my woodshed is. Okay. Got it. And so the, and that that part's all full right. trees and stuff. I mean, it's all laid to the rocks and everything. Yeah. Okay. But that's not where your snowmobile trail goes there. Is the rest of the road that we do use grown up road, or is that even town road? Uh, okay. County State Forest. Can out you put the map back up, Bill? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try to get the other map. But, well, the one you have is worse. <laughs> also, Al, that one, that, the number two road, that's not the one that goes through Neil's property? No, the number two is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. this, this road right here. Their property the corner is right there in the road. Yep. And then the laid up stone wall <coughs> is just off from theirs right through here. It's common common boundary. Comes out right here. But but I don't know what classification where this turns <laughs> and, and your snowmobile trail goes straight and wraps around the end of that uh, hemlock knob there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know what that little piece is that ties in to where the trail goes down to the Lucy Putnam. So where's where's <laughs> Sue had his driveway on that map? She's off and she she disappeared. Well, I know where she is, but I'm saying where it is on the on the map. It's right there. here. So. Oh, it's way down there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if I have that chart. Oops. <clears throat> Yeah, it's not 
So John Stone Mosier now owns that piece that says Cody on it. That's correct. Right. Yeah. And, and Logan is what you own? No, I actually the O'Brien. I think Logan was her brother or is her brother. He owns that other piece. Um, I own both sides of the road down through the air for a ways. So that map doesn't show that road. Anymore. No, that doesn't. Well, I'm just looking at that property line, which is following something. But who knows where it's going? Yeah, that kind of looks like the shape of the road. Yeah, but, it does mm -hmm. yeah, but it's mm -hmm. off to the right a little bit. There's a, the top part of it, and probably 75 yards is where the boundary is on the other side of the road. And you get down towards Hall Ranch Road, it starts getting real close there. So this doesn't show the road that comes down at Lewis Road. Why? Not on this. Not on this one. Mm -hmm. It's been on the other one. Right. So someone said that was a bastard. I didn't even really show that one. That road was a bastard. Not to go back down to that. You know, this one really doesn't do anything. Okay. Is it a bass trail? Uh, no. Is that a trail? Earlier, someone mentioned it, 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 the bass trail was a bass trail. Yeah. I, I just I didn't it know it was a common route. I didn't realize it, if, it, if it was or not. But if it was a bass trail, do you have to get the permission or something to go yeah. on the front? So is there a permission granted for those trails? Or have to be from down the down road. You don't need permission for a camera. No, I just wonder if it went across somebody's property or something. I'm sure it does. That road that goes straight down was okay around this winter road. Keep fishing it down to use it in the winter. The number three road? The one going straight down the hall. Oh, road. two, number two. two. He did that because the hill would get screwed up going down around the well at Ellsworth with drifts and so on, so it was easier to go that way. It was shorter for him anyway. And back then, all the ranch went through. Through the, what, 35? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Out on the corner. Yeah. <laughs> and that curve that heads toward Hells, that actually comes off the trail a little bit before it gets to where you can see the houses. It goes down, now that Softwood Grove there, but it used to go through that. But it follows that same shape. As far as the piece that goes straight up to the Putnam State Forest Road, that we did find descriptions, but it didn't go that far. But there's no way in the world that anybody go around there, go down to Hall Ranch and then climb that hill and get back up to where they were under guards from. Mm -hmm. So it was a town road. That supposedly is part of the stage road to get the stage from Rockingham to Stage Road now that we have. Well, didn't one of them say it went from Athens to uh, Rockingham? It or does say that, that, but it's yeah, that's up. not yeah okay. That that made no sense. No, you can't make anything fit that. Way. Right. Okay. <laughs> the directions wrong. Everything yeah. wrong. But the village, when that road was laid out, the town was 30 years old. No one knows how many roads were actually laid out. Oh, I'm sure. So that was their main way to get through. And the village at that time was up Middletown. <laughs> so they had to right to it. This is, uh, this is that, the, the road that starting at, that goes off Otis, that so, the green, the short section. <laughs> This is what the description, I have more copies of this, anybody want to see it. This is what the description is like, and it's just the yellow that is this segment, and then it goes on to the next page for a whole bunch more. <coughs> this is this in, in lengths. And that's why it goes, like I said, it goes all the way down, comes back up, and ends up on Fisher Hill. Mm -hmm. So is there any reason why we should not do this? I don't know anybody say so. <laughs> well, I think, I think the, the other question too, if you decide to do it, what do you want to call it? Is it going to be a trail? That's four. Uh, or what? Thanks for John Gilbert wanted to be here. It turns out his wife 
I broke her leg yesterday skiing. He was planning to be here, but she had that surgery on her leg or whatever. So he was hoping to attend this meeting, and unfortunately can't. So I don't know if there would be, if you just make this decision tonight, or if there's another, you know, time of discussion with this or not. Or we don't know what select board took these off. Right. Somebody made a decision that not to mess with them anymore. Well, no. wasn't there something like well, the road something had to be done in like by 2015? That was one of the or that, that was, was the ancient roads. This is yeah. these are not ancient roads. So it was ancient roads that had to be done by 2015 and put on the map. Mm -hmm. right. But then the federal judge said that you found a description didn't find road that didn't exist. Well, it did. It did matter. Found a road didn't find a description that didn't exist. It did matter what he said because this isn't an ancient road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An ancient road is a field that never had a road in it, but somehow somebody had filed a petition signed by the select board that, yeah, you can have a road there. But then no one ever did anything. There's one down in the southwest corner of Grafton. We yeah, don't care if like, that's an ancient road, we didn't do anything. Went from quarry <laughs> to Garden Hill Road, never got built. Yeah. Bill, do you say there was a gate? I have some, you could have to ask yeah, the people sitting here. The gate is probably mm -hmm. about in here. It's after that big sweeping corner. Who put that in Ellsworth? I think Josh Ellsworth put that in. Thinking that because the road wasn't on the map, that he could do that. He was, he was having some you know, activity up there that were you know, kind of making a mess of stuff and so on. So. As I said, without the road being on the map, I believe he thought he had the authority to do that. Hmm. Put a cable right <clears throat> off Otis Road, too. There's three gates, I think. Amy. Well, there's one where his ori the original town road went up through where his little cabin is. And then there's one at the end of the way by Otis Road. And there's a metal one, I think, he put up. A higher road. Yeah. Right. That's the one I'm talking about, the metal gate. Right. Yeah. That's where it goes once you get past mm -hmm. his camp and whatnot. Correct. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think Kevin's right, only Josh is realizing that we're yeah. still town road. He didn't do it to be. But so, you can have a gate if you don't lock it, correct? Mm -hmm. If the select board says you can have a gate and as long as you don't lock it, you can have a gate as long as you don't lock it. It's called a pent road. But that wasn't laid out as a pent road. <laughs> I, I'm saying what the law is. I don't. Well, don't you have to change your classification? You're going to have to change your classification anyway. Because if you want to make these legal trails, which is what my recommendation, I think that's Danny's recommendation, to make them legal trails, because we don't want to screw them. Hmm. But a legal trail, just so everybody understands, hmm. is a 50 foot right away. The center line of the trail is 50 feet wide. Hmm. And it goes out 50 feet, 25 feet on either side of the center line of the trail. So they'll look like a road on the map, but they are. And that gives you the right to some time later come in and reclassify. They are probably, because no one's ever done anything with them, either class four or class three. So I would suggest you guys make a decision how you want them back on the map so we can at least have some uh, <coughs> uh, qualification of what they are. So if we classify that as a trail somewhere down around 20 years or whatever, somebody can go in and upgrade that road to class three. Well, the select board could actually upgrade it if they wanted to. Well, I'm, but, yeah, but, but I'm just saying, saying, but somebody could. Yeah, yeah. yeah they could bring yeah. it up to class three and you accept it. Just yeah. like you did in the road. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that the only thing you need to do to get that taken care of? Get right. it brought up to right. right. standards? No. Yeah. What we're really doing here tonight is the, the 20th of, of, uh, of February, the select board has to sign a certification of our map lengths, our, our road lengths, so a certified uh, drafted official map. On that map, I'm taking off Legal Trail 8, that was the Old Town Road, that's about 1.3, taking that off, and if I add this on, it would be uh, something right at a mile, hmm. it would be 0.38 and 0.73, so um, a mile and, a, and 11, mile, 1.11 miles. But, but you're not 
can you do it another, I mean, if you, even if you miss this 20th deadline, you can still do it. Next later, year. Next yeah. year. You can do it next year. Next year, yeah. 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 But the, the process yeah. takes until <clears throat> I have to argue with them, get them to agree with me, and that <clears throat> whole process takes until, they have until April to, to print them out. So would we have time if, if what, uh, Ellsworth, which one? Josh. Is Josh, Josh. Yeah. If Josh were to come in, would we have time to do that? Or is that something we, we could? Do? Well, I don't know. You're, you're going to certify that this is what it is. And then you, I, I guess you can say, well, what happened to us like a, a, a couple of years ago is we added that the cutoff, the famous cutoff, below <coughs> Bill's house. Oh, boy. And, uh, and they didn't accept it, so they simply took it off our certification. I guess we can go back to the same thing about it. And am I going to understand that this uh, discussion tonight is serving as a hearing for a reclassification of these town roads to trails? Uh, no, Aaron. This is to put them back on the map. <laughs> put them back on the map and then you have to decide how you want to put them. Either class three, okay. class four, or trail. Okay, Should we good. actually have a 90 day notice and put them back, you know, in reclassification? I don't know. I don't know if we should or not. My intent was that we put it back on to put it back on and say that we're putting it back on as legal trail. If someone complains about putting it back on as legal trails at that, that point in time, that we could then uh, take up the issue of whether or not we have to uh, to uh, struggle with the classification. And the reason for that would be, for instance, if you took my road and made it a legal, or your road, no, not your road, but Rooney's road and made it a legal trail, and they're not, you're not going to plow it anymore, you're not going to take care of it anymore, and you, you just called a meeting, uh, uh, you put it on other business one night and reclassified it, somebody would probably complain. But if they don't yeah, complain, I don't know that we have to do anything with it. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable with the idea that you can uh, reclassify pending any um, people complaining. I think you have to I think have the, a formal yeah, words to do this. I, 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 I think really what we're doing is because there's no documentation that the road was abandoned or thrown up, whatever term you want to use, Still. because there's nothing to show that the town stopped it should show on your map mm -hmm. that it is a town road until you can document that it so we're just really correcting an error in the mapping correct uh, that is not i don't have a problem with that i have a problem with the idea that you're going to say that what are you pretending to have an illegal trail we're telling the, the folks at the v trans <coughs> that it's a legal trail and then we're not going to do anything about that classification unless somebody complains. I'm saying in order to make it a legal trail, you have to have the damn hearing. Well, <laughs> if, if you put it on the map because it was supposed to be there, are you creating or if just fixing a, an error you, in the map? If you put it on the, on the map as a class 4 road, no problem. But if you say it's a legal trail, that's changing classification. And I think you have to have a hearing to do that. That's a separate issue. Yeah, but we don't know what the classification of the road is. Yeah. All I can tell you is when I added the legal trails from um, mm. last year, they're all on there as legal trails. Never was that issue brought up by VTrans at all. Mm. That, that layout doesn't say anything about trails or anything else. It's down the road. Mm. And there's been no documentation on it doing anything with it. So. If you approve this going on the map, it should be going on as a class row or row. If you want to reclassify it later, then go through the process. You know, if you put it on a class four row, we got to we got to maintain it. Mm -hmm. You guys have have road and bridge standards that require you to maintain uh, a class four row. Good news is there's no bridges there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Forget about that. Forget about that. That was the old one, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, two o'clock. Maintain any bridges, culverts, hmm. and any washes over a foot deep. You guys approved it last year. Hmm. Isn't part of the argument that this is already a class four road? Yeah. 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 
not my argument. My argument is that it's a public right of way that's not on the map. <laughs> and I want the public right of way put back on the map. And I don't care what you put it on. So if it's a class four, do I get number two fixed to my camper? <laughs> if it's a class four, do I get number two fixed to my camper? If, if, if they declare it, uh, yeah. If they declare it class four, he's got to go out there with the tenant to learn to fix it. Right? Uh, somehow. Uh, no, that's not true. No, uh, no that isn't quite right. No. What is it? What no. do we have to do to class four votes? I'm being serious. We have to maintain the coverts that are town coverts. If someone just put one in and there's no permit of it, and it's your cover. Yeah. Hmm. That's how we dealt with it on Doug Road, on okay. the class four. Okay. Maintain the bridges, which we've done on the other end of the uh, hall race already. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's a gully wash, or I think it's a foot deep, you have to make it so it's passable. They're not not eroding, or continue erosion. But as far as bringing it up, for us to maintain it, no. That's up to the homeowner. If he wants to bring it up to a class three standard, right. that's on his dollar. And then it's up to the selectmen if they want to approve to right, take right. it over. It's not required. It's we not don't want the town does not bring it up to a class three right. hmm. because someone is on. Hmm. Well, what if, for instance, just to go the other way, what if that was a trail and somebody said, oh, I want the trail to be a class four? So is it up to them, that landowner, to at least bring it up to a class four? I, I which is think so. Which is at least clearing. But I see Eric's yeah. point that this would have been a class four road, and you're changing the classification if you call it a trail that you have to have a public hearing. Right. But we don't know if it was a class four road. It's a public right of way. Well, well that's that's says it's public right. Well, but it doesn't it does say that in the description. It doesn't say it anywhere in town. There's no reclassification of road from three to four. They just stopped maintaining it. It became a class four. Correct. But shouldn't Josh be here since the Jackson moves three quarters of his land? I would think so. Discuss it and until next meeting and still leave before the twentieth. Yeah. As long as he gets back before the twentieth. Next meeting is the seventeenth. Seventeenth. Yeah. So why don't why don't we why don't we just postpone this thing to the to the next meeting and have Josh or his representative here. Uh, whoever it is, so he can make his argument or whatever. I mean, I'm proud of representative here tonight. Well, uh, well, uh, no, it's going to come anyway. But, um, but no, I'm here to hold Josh because, you know, I am in touch with him and let him know that that's, that's the plan. And I think it's important for him to be here. But, you know, so. And Kevin, if he can't be here, then he has to appoint somebody to be here for, and who could represent him with his argument for, against, or okay. whatever. Okay. 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 So you said that's a 17? Yes. Okay. Do you have a sense of what where Josh is going with this? Um, I think his feeling is that, you know, as I said, he wouldn't have put any gate in if he didn't feel he was justified in doing that. And because of that road not being on the map, I think he, I believe he might have mentioned that he went in and, and maybe asked a question and looked at the town, at the map at the town hall, and being that there wasn't on that, he went ahead and put the gate in because he was having trouble with some four wheelers, etc. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he's not completely closed. I think he's wondering, like, you know, why is this happening now, or why wasn't it on the map originally? You know, so, mm -hmm. so, it should have been. So, the, the, that's the, right. other issue, the other issue, though, is we're putting a road back on the map. I understand that. You're not laying out a new road. That's correct. Roads map back on the map. Okay, does a landowner, and I'm just raising the issue, does a landowner have the right to say no? Probably not. No. That's the issue. I, I would call, I'd call them and talk to Megan or um, the other one and ask them how that does work. What do you assume to be? I, I, I ain't going to ask. Um, this is a, a different situation in town, but, but yet it's a similar situation. Um, most people know the GIA property, and, and most people know we've had some issues with access. The, the long-term solution GIA is looking at is to improve um, the, the piece of property so that they can go out Walker Road into Athens. But it's the same issue is going to occur there once they do repairs of that road, 
so that they can use it. If you can't block the use of it during mud season, people are going to be up there ripping and tearing and you can put $12,000 worth of work in there and have it torn up in an afternoon and then the vehicles parked down at MKT covered with mud aren't, aren't I cool? And, and they just destroyed the road. So how do you how do you protect that if you can't gate it? That's kind of where I'm going with that. There's, there's a way that you can because if you read that, that segment or section on class four, the selectmen have the right to say when and when not they can run a class four road. It's like posting a road oh, and yeah. in the spring. You should be right now. Okay, day. so it, it can, it can be protected. Yes, there is a part in there. It's been many years since I read that part, but the selectmen have the right to restrict class four road when it can be used. Hmm. I know. You, I would assume being that wording that you could say it can't be used from such a date to another date. Maybe maybe Josh Josh will go through but maybe that would not be a concern if if it could be shut down during certain times of the year. Well, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know there's, there's no soil on the I'm not sure if it's different anyway. different anyway. I know over in New Hampshire there's a couple of trails yeah, there's, there's no soil in the big lot out there. Yeah, it was a key one of those closed. Not on walk regions. Yeah. Right. But I'm thinking of repairing the road between the yellow house and the fairbanks. That's the so yeah. Well look is it okay if we postpone this yes. to the 17th? Yes. Okay. I don't think we need a motion, but I think we can just put it on the agenda for the 17th. Yeah. Okay. So then, Kevin, you, 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 you can touch base yeah. with uh, Josh. I will. And tell him that he has to, if he can't be there, he has to have a representative. Yeah. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, the select board will do whatever they do. Yeah, I'll pass it on. Okay. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we've done that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, commissions. You all have um, the commissions for the school and for the wastewater. I'm assuming that uh, the school has, the wastewater has, they filled in their names. Uh, and, and the years, um, but there's no, there's nothing filled in for the school bill. So what, what are we supposed to do with this? Is this uh, uh, the um, create, the creation of a commission for the draft of water wastewater right. uh, is, is a conversion from a committee to a commission. Mm -hmm. Correct. With the with appointment of those years. Um, I'll let uh, I'll let Suzanne talk. She's the chair. Let her talk about what she's done. I, I wrote the basic part and then the committee itself and, and Suzanne rewrote it and uh, and uh, she uh, talked to them and filled in the dates of the length of terms. So what at the end of the night, if you approve it, you should approve the wastewater commission with um, the uh, those general um, I mean, with with the general. Um, purposes and then the appointments they need to have the rules procedure conflict of interest which they can do later and then have uh, their, their specific purposes um, for this commission which is at the very bottom and on to the next page so if you're going to adopt it I would adopt it with all those or or at least uh, if you're not, if you're not going to adopt a purpose, a specific purpose to the wastewater and water, or a general purpose for any commission, then I would, I would amend it before you do that, and then make the appointments of these. And I would ask that you make the appointments through um, 20, uh, 2021. So after town meeting <coughs> next next year, just so that we have some continuity. Mm -hmm. Suzanne, you want to speak on behalf of this? I think there are two key takeaways for the select board. Uh, one is that the reason we're asking to be named a commission rather than a committee is because our work will transcend at least one, if not two, town meetings. And while the select board has every right to dissolve a commission 
it it's it is more likely that with the stature of a commission the select board would choose to allow the commission work to continue so the main takeaway here and the main reason we're asking for this change is to provide at least some opportunity or a higher probability of that continuity and the second key takeaway as you read there is just re-emphasize what we said to the select board and the select board agree as part of our purpose is that we see ourselves in the role of providing information and education to our community about water management and therefore we are likely not to take a stand on anything we are likely to continue to provide information in educational forums or whatever form they may take over the next months um, so that people in the town can make up our own mind, their own minds, about the kind of wastewater management system they'd like to have. Um, and then I believe Bill has presented the terms in the document that you have. Um, so those are staggered terms, again, I think uh, in line with our consistency goal. Um, and the other item that Bill also mentioned on I'll repeat is that uh, if you would agree to allow our committee to stay intact through the town meeting of uh, 21, then the staff <coughs> terms begin. Did that make sense? Mm -hmm. Does that answer your yep. thoughts and questions? Would you consider a suggestion? Yes. Um, I see the terms of the vice chair and the chair expire at the same time. I'd make a recommendation that you uh, stagger. stagger those so, like perhaps uh, Matt Siano is 223. Well, maybe maybe he went in 22, and, and then either the vice chair or the chair went in 23. Something like that. That's a very good suggestion. <clears throat> yeah. So I think that that happens. Yeah. 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 So do you want mine? No, that's an excellent suggestion. Um, so the suggestion is to put Matt Siena was 2022 yeah, and that. Chris Wallace is 2023. Yeah. yeah. So definitely we want to leave Chris on the longest. So I'll exchange places with Matt. Anybody, Suzanne? Kim volunteers. Suzanne, Kim volunteers. <laughs> How did you arrive um, to Pan's at these dates? And so I sent out an, I sent out an email to all the men, members of the committee. And you may not like this process, Kathy, and you may say no. I sent out an email to all the members of the committee and I asked them to volunteer for terms. And I thought there would be a rush for everybody to sign up for a three-year term. So, <laughs> so, so I said, um, if that happens, or if I don't hear back, then I will pull names from a hat. And then later on, so I had originally taken the one-year slot, and um, that that's how it happened that and then I later on heard from Paul, and Paul said that he wanted to have the one-year slot. So in respect of that, I called Bill today, because it was kind of a last-minute request, and put him in and took his place. And that's how we ended up with this situation that I agree with Al is not ideal for both of us to have. Uh, well, I just throw that yeah. out as one possibility. Yeah. But I think the take-home is that the chair and vice chair don't expect No, I think you're right. absolutely right. So, and, and yeah, would you really seriously do no, that? Yes. So, Kathy, are you all right with my process? It's good process. I don't have to, I don't have to agree, but I can accept it. Okay. Um, and did the committee, the folks that are on the committee, did they go through this whole um, document? Yes, yes, we would. And you got in meeting them? Yeah. yeah. That was on the agenda for our previous meeting. Okay, so then uh, 
Bill, I think what we're agreeing to do is to exchange um, uh, Suzanne for Matt on 2023, and Matt will come down to 20. No, no, no. Of course. Chris will go up to Matt on 2023. And Matt will come down to 2022. There's, there's, of course, nothing to say at the end of a person's term that they just don't get another three year sure. term if they are willing. Yes, right. that's true. And it's also true out to the same token that committee or commission members, a commission member in this case, can resign at any time too. Right. Right. So it's a. Uh, yep. So there, there are, yeah. Okay. Um, so is, is that clear? So Paul is 2021, and Ken and uh, Chris are 2023, and Matt and Suzanne are 2022. Is that? Good for everybody. Work for me. Yeah. Yeah. Make a motion that we accept the recommendation with the corrections made. Okay. And, and, and it doesn't go into effect for 2021, is that correct? Uh, no. It'll go in effect. Uh, but, it'll go in effect by the, in, in this town meeting okay. this fiscal year 20. But our committee commission will stay completely as it is. Okay, so with no turnover. So that has to be until the fiscal year twenty one town meeting. Okay. All right. No, I don't I don't understand what you're doing. You've got to create a commission. Are you creating a commission to begin March fifth? Yeah. With these appointees. Yeah. That's what you're doing. March third. That's it. March, March 3rd. 3rd. March third. Sure. Or yes. you, why aren't you creating a commission that starts right now? Yeah, yeah, right now. I'm assuming yeah. it's going to start right now. Okay. It's, it's just not so boring. Bill, just so Bill, remember you and I talked about, and you mentioned earlier, just so we stay together until fiscal year 21. Well, you, you, you create it There's now. No term the first term is up. Anymore. Paul's term is up. The town March, meeting. That town meeting in the 2021. 21. But you create it now. But if you create it, because it, the select board creates it, it's not a, it it's doesn't not a get on the, it's not voted no. by the voters. No. No. So we can do it right now and be yeah. done with yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Just so we know that the anniversary date for these appointments is not February 3rd, 2021. The anniversary date for these appointments is town meeting uh, fiscal year 21. So that if we have something to present to the town at that time, the yep. commission will be intact as it is now. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Now these will also be select board appointments, right? The select board will make yes. the appointments. You can present and then the select board will just approve. Sure. Yes. Yes. Right. It should be because it's a commission of the right. select board. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't catch that. The select board will appoint the, when a person is due, the, the yeah, committee can make a recommendation. It'll be on, on our, it'll it'll be on your appointments for right. like right, the yes. 18th or so of March each year. Right, right yes. Okay. Okay. So and thank have, you. Thank you very much. Do we have a second to Alf motion? Yeah, I second. Okay. Any further discussion? So all in favor of Alf motion to create this uh, commission now. Uh, and the anniversary date would be the 21st, right? Is that correct? Yes. Now meeting. Uh, 2021. 2021. Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. You're saying? Do you have to? So it's four, four my abstention. Okay. Now, Bill, the school, what do, what do we want to do with the school? There's no names here. I want you to appoint a commission. <clears throat> Uh, wait, uh, but first of all, does Hardy, uh, does Hardy have any comment on this? I think you know, I had talk, sort of talked with Jack Breyer that I would be interested in possibly participating. Right, I did that. Um, but I think Jack needs to get involved here and define with you people what do you want the commission to do 
as a select board, what, what do you want us to provide you with for information? Well, he should come to us with a... That's correct. I agree. He should come to us with, with his with ideas so that we can discuss it and then to decide whether we like it or we don't like it. So what I'm saying is I don't think we can do anything. No, I don't think we can either. Hmm. That's why I'm saying. So uh, there's more information for the client. I, so that everybody understands, maybe you do, I just want to make sure everybody... Jack was Jack hmm. is concerned that if in the event that we are successful with the... Uh, lawsuit. Uh, lawsuit that there would be a there could be a vacuum and this committee could then kind of maybe fall into it or if it were not successful then this somehow they could be an advisor to live on between the town and the, the, the new whatever as was I understand it. that was what he told us so, uh, so uh, but I think he has to come and give us uh, more definition yeah Bill that's all well and good. If the town wants to have a commission that gives it, under the education code, some representation before the school board, whether or not Jack comes back with something, because he's, I've been asking him for something for two months so far. And I know he's busy, but I don't get anything from him. Uh, I sent this to him just like it is. I then went back and rewrote the purpose because I didn't hear anything from him. If the town and I'm not advocating for a commission, but apparently his attorney, Larry Slayson, has told him that if the town has a commission, they have some standing before the school board, before any school district, and, it, and they have to be recognized by the school district. By that I mean not... Whatever, the, they have standing to talk in front of the school district for the whole town. So what I, I think you, the town has to decide, and I don't know who that is, whether or not you want this, whether or not Jack comes back or not. Well, I think I think it's hard to make that decision until we understand what Jack wants. I mean, what does well, the town? No, I, what I'm saying, what does the town want? I I, yeah. I I take the opposite approach to what you're saying, and I agree with Bill. Mm -hmm. Is we as a select board can establish what we want if if the. Jack wants to come and negotiate or, or say, well, okay. consider this. But, but we can be proactive and say, this is what we think rep is good for our, our constituents to represent them until somebody asks us to change it, that'll be what they have. So then if, if, that's, if that's the case, then what we should do is put this on the agenda for the 17th, and between now and then work up what you want the commission to do, and then we can make that decision. What, Bill? Make it what we want it to do. Well, what what you want what what you want the commission to be? I think it's all right here. And do we need it? I think I think we can work it out of here. Do what's here, and then just leave it up to the current school board to or Jack to come up with or or people volunteer to fill in the names. Yes, Bill. I agree to put it off to the 17th. Meanwhile, I'll find out what that is, what that education code section is and what it says. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Yep. So we'll put this on the on the for the 17th. Bill will do some more research. In the meantime, maybe you know individually, if you want to talk to Bill, if you have some ideas, let him know, and, and then he can he can have a, a new document for us to do on the 17th. And if we could get Jack here. <coughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, we should also extend the invitation to the folks that are currently uh, on the school board. It, it, it's, or, or at least make them aware of this. I don't know how much of this Jack has shared. Jack and Jess. Jack and Jess. Okay. Well, I'll make sure Jess knows. There's two school board members. Jack and uh, Jessica. Right. Those are the two school, school board members. Okay. So they are. Mm -hmm. So the others have gone. Right. Yeah. Well, there's, there is a there. Uh, budget meeting this Thursday at uh, the school. I'm planning to attend and I'll try to talk to Jack. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Can we move on from that? 
Uh, apparently, we need to request uh, contact approval with uh, WRC as a letter. I can, I can address that. Okay. Can you um, when you have it, when you have a town plan, if you want to get the benefits of a town plan, like be able to get municipal plan grant, it has to be it, it has to be approved by the Linden Commission, and your planning process has to be approved. That's one hearing. That letter has already gone to them. The second hearing, hopefully that same night, would be, uh, and they would probably happen on a select board meeting night, but at 5 and 5.30. The second uh, meeting would be for the energy class, that we comply with all the energy requirements so that our town plan can have preferred status before the PUC on any energy project. So uh, I've already sent that letter and requested the hearings from them uh, because the uh, code says that, that it doesn't say you guys have to ask, so I asked. And uh, the um, uh, there is a huge form that is very scary, but it is the shortcuts in it, and Marion Major is going to help me through it, but there's pages you can skip by just saying yes, that it is kind of like the, the wind and plant, and then the, another yes if it's kind of like something else. And then you go to uh, the energy thing, and, and so it might be a lot easier. Otherwise, you got to specify where everything is. And uh, though the form I did in September pretty much goes through every paragraph of the thing and says where you'll find it, I apparently don't have to do that. So that's what I'm hoping to be able to finish that. But you can't have the hearing until that's done. And I didn't read her email, but Joe, you said you did? She requested to have a meeting uh, sometime in February or in March. I forget the date in March. Uh, what about the like board meeting? So I, and I asked Bill about that. If I can finish the form in time, we could but have it. No, I suggest no, we don't want to have it. Let's do it in March. We I, do I it. suggest we put it into March because we got all this kind of stuff coming up. Way too much. But um, I don't know whether you know. I don't know what, whether we can make a deadline or not. But we can put it on a March meeting. If it's okay with everybody. I you know I probably got the email. I just was busy to take it. Didn't. Oh, no, there was an email. Yeah, right. so I probably got the email, but I didn't see yeah. it. And but they were requesting two dates: a date in February, a date in March. And I said, Bill, I said, I, I, let's do it in March if you can. That was, that's my comment, but it's up to the board. So that's what that's what this is for. Um, so is that okay with everybody that Bill will continue to form and we'll set up the dates so when we're ready and sometime in March? Yeah. If you guys don't have to do anything except if you want, show up. Yeah. And you're going to have the meeting afterwards. It's their meeting to go over it in front of the town and ask questions of the planning commission or, or the people in the town or you guys. WRC? WRC. It's a, it's a, it's, well, I don't know how they do it anymore, but uh, Eric probably knows it. It's a three-person committee? At least. Um, and uh, one staff person usually comes from the WRC, and they hold it preferably in the town that is requesting yeah. the approval. Sometimes they'll hold it in their own offices down there. Yeah. No, he said they said they would come here. Yeah, the MLI the said they would come to our. Yeah. They do it on night of our select board meeting. Yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. what they did before. Mm -hmm. They also said it's about 15 or 20 people. So probably have to have it at school. No, no. Well, we don't have to have it. We can have it to school, but there any. This is not a fight over the town plan. No, I know that's okay, that. This is for them to come say, that's all. That's all it's for. I mean, we can have it at the school if you want, but you're going to be sitting there with three chairs. And, yeah, I know. I understand. Mm -hmm. that's, you can do it. <coughs> it's, it's an opportunity for uh, three of your peer planning commission members from similar towns, but not adjacent towns, to look at your town plan, give it a critique, and hold, hold those uh, recommendations out to you at a town hearing, preferably in your town. Um, there's nothing binding about their critique. It's just informational, and they take information back from the town at the same time. 
But if they make a recommendation, then they have they as a committee have to make a recommendation and then what we'll after commission uh, to accept the draft and town plan as written and the town the town's planning process as was done. And as we've got the special wrinkle for the uh, uh, energy plan on top of that. But what happens if they recommendations they want to see something correct <coughs> no? How do you correct Very it? rarely I I've seen that happen once. Okay. Um, it's From the recommendations are not binding on us. Okay. They're informational and, and are for the purpose of informing further changes to the town plan in its next edition. Okay. All right, so why don't we wait and see what happens and we'll figure what date they can and we'll put it on the agenda sometime in March or maybe even in April, depending on what happens. Um, the next item, um, there's a, I have a suggestion, and, and I know in the past what we have done is we've taken the select board and we've given each one a task. Somebody does the warrant, somebody does the select budget, somebody does something else. Um, because there's a um, contested, contested elections this year, there's some rumors out there that our budget went up 12 percent and, and there's going to be some discussion and questions of us about our budget, I felt maybe it would be worth us having a open meeting where we could all get together with Kim and we could go over the budget line by line so that we're all up to speed rather than sitting up there at candidate at the pre-town meeting and looking we don't have the answer or there it's a false answer. So if you want to do that, it's fine with me. Um, let's pick a date. And Comes available and we can just do it sometime during the day. Yeah, during the day. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at and and then we, you know we can everybody will be on the same page so that and then we can decide how we want to handle the, the, the you know the pre town meeting. Yeah. So I don't know. Do you want to be, it be a warrant? Our day would be a warrant meeting. It'll be a warrant meeting. Yeah. Anybody can come, but you know we can do it up at the town hall. We can do it here in the warrant. What usually works the best is to go through and identify all the changes exactly. where, where you've increased it yep. and, and go right there. Yep. I mean, don't, you go there and say, this is an increase and this is why. Yeah, right. This is an informational right. thing. But, but, but you're proactive. You're not trying to hide anything. No, no, no. You're, you're looking at it and say, there's a change here, increase. This is the reason mm -hmm. for the increase. And Usually, once they hear the explanation, they say, "Yeah, that makes sense." And we, as a board, we all, we all approve the budget, right? So, you know, we have an opportunity to explain to the <laughs> residents why we did what we did. Sure. So, um, how do you want to you want to give some dates to Bill? Or how about we just we're all here right well, now. Well, finally, we just pick a date. So it has to be a day other than a Wednesday. Right. Yes. How about the 18th of February? Tuesday. No, that's tax day. Yeah, that's <laughs> normally it's Saturday the 15th, but the, I've extended it. How about the 11th? Oh. That's better for me. What is that? What is that date? I can't do it the 11th. The 11th would be like a week from tomorrow. I can't do it the 11th. I have a meeting all the time. How about the 10th? How about the 13th? Mm -hmm. 13th of Wednesday. That's okay with me. 13th of Thursday. 13th of Thursday. I can't do the 13th. I have a fruit freak. About the 10th. I can do the 10th. I can. I can do the 10th. Yeah. Monday. 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 That work? So we are today. Yeah. Yeah. And what time? What time of the day do you have to do this? Nine. Fine with me. Okay. The early the better. Nine, but nine works. Yeah. 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 So February 10th at 9 a.m., right? Yeah. Okay. What do you mean? <coughs> and if there's a conflict, we'll let it know. We can always try another day. Just think how many emails we just sent. Exactly. <laughs> oh, no. We still need emails. No, no, no. So what do you want to get prepared? What are you looking for? Like the last Why? two years? No. Oh. 
Because all we're going to do is I'm going to print out reports. Well, I think what I think what Kim, what we need to do is go over the current budget, and then kind of look back and say what is the because questions are going to come up. I think about well, the budget was up 20 percent or 10 percent or whatever. So we can go back a couple of years and see what last year was a two percent increase. This year is a two and a half, whatever. Okay, so you want to see 19 and. Yeah, two years. Yeah, two years. So 19 that was budgeted, yeah. then the actual, and then the 20 right. that were right. Right. Yeah. And 20 and then, that were in, and right. 21 that were proposed. Right, and if it went up six percent or whatever the percentage is, we can tell them why it went up. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, okay. it would be helpful to have the actual, not just the total, but the, the line yeah. items right. that would yeah. show mm -hmm. where the increases are. Right. Just yeah. like the budget paper right. idea. Right. 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 Except this time it's going to have one more in there. Right. Right. We don't need a worksheet or anything, we just need the... Yeah. Right. 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 What you're saying is, the budget, when you worked on the budget, you had three columns and a blank. And you filled it in the blank. Right. right. This will have all four right. columns filled in. Yes. Right. Including right. the blank will be filled in. Yes. Right. Right. Is yeah. that yeah. enough? Yeah. Yeah. Will, will the town right. report be back by then? I know. I know. Yes. Not by the 10th. Okay. Well, I, I'm hoping I haven't heard from them. That, that brings up a, another point. Does it make sense that we wait until we have the town reports in our hand to do this meeting, make our notes in our town report? Mm -hmm. It should be the same day. Well, the, town, the, the budget is the same as what's in the town. Well, I know, but I'm just thinking. Yeah. No. No. I don't think no. You just, I was just going to say, just if I have a grant, but I'm not there, so forms were then, yeah, they're not there. Then I'm coming. giving you the 10. So. You look good for that. Here, the 10. Okay. All right, next right. item um, is about the um, justice of the peace. Um, can you yes. take that um, one? Yeah, I can. You want to go ahead? Yeah, we, well, we had a resignation with that bank, even town. Typically, when there's a JP vacancy, um, anywhere in the state um, that is filled by gubernatorial appointment. Um, he will, they typically will um, appoint someone of the same party um, as the, the vacancy um, uh, and was um, put on the, on the ballot by the Town Democratic Committee. So uh, the Democratic Committee um, provided a name um, the state does require before we board a recommendation that there be a letter of interest on the part of that candidate um, who's been nominated to fill that vacancy. Um, so um, Dave, David Woodall has come forward, um, volunteered um, to do, do so. He's a member of the Town Democratic Committee and um, he has um, written a letter of intent to fill the remainder of um, the vacancy of Bank's term until the November election, and so that can be sent to Montpelier. Yeah. So we don't need to do anything, right? Just be aware. Do you need a motion just, on us? Just to be aware. Um, do you need a motion or something? I would just to have your blessings okay. in the minutes right. that, yes, um, you're okay with it. And his email does say, I'm willing to complete the term of JP for Ed Bank. Thanks, David Little. And that will go accompany the letter that I have to Susan Young with the Pin Rock Committee. Secretary to the so I'll, I'll make a motion to the next step. Second. Second. Chris, second. Alan, second. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Um, further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Is that satisfied, Kim? Yes. Okay. Right. And then uh, the next item is Kim's um, not, uh, 8A, which is um, mapping. Is now mm -hmm. money for um, money, um, money for the um, wastewater. Talking yeah. about um, the wastewater. Yep. Um, as a committee, mm -hmm. um, again, we have gotten together and we're trying to go back over and clean up files from the feasibility studies that were done by Otter Creek um, and Taiwan. And we pulled out their maps and we're sorting through, but we want to be able to use some of these maps to update the data that's on them. And in order to do that, we don't want to ruin the original, so we'd like to make copies of um, probably four maps that's already there. And by doing that, they're very large, so we would want to take them to, like, staples. Um, but um, I'm also asking for permission to be able to, be, to reimburse whomever is going to take these maps so it's not coming out of their pocket. We do have a line item in our budget that we've had for many, many years since I came here that says sewage study. 
and it was used back when the feasibility study was done. And right now we don't budget in, we don't have a line item budget for it, but we did spend $134 when we sent out all of the um, information for our water testing. So we bought stamps and supplies. So if that's in there, of course it would be a negative, um, but we didn't know if we could get your lessons for spending money to at least have a couple of so that's something that Deagle could do? I don't know if you yeah. would take the copies or not, but it was that or staples. Because you would, would there. Could just do professional services or something like that. Yeah. Are <coughs> paper copies you're just going to get printed or are they digital? They're paper just, copies, just paper 24 copies. by 36 large format. Yeah. Yeah. Deagle certainly has some equipment well, to do that. Yeah, of course you do. They can really do for free. So, Oh, sort of staples and it's about fifteen dollars or something that size. Each sheet? Yeah. 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 But maybe yeah, we should try pocket six. You only know, like pocket sixty bucks. You said four maps. Yeah, yeah, I know. But maybe tops would be four maps. But maybe yeah. Deagle will, will do it cheaper or something. Maybe yeah. it's worth a shot. Well, if not, I say he'll do it. Yeah, I'll, we can check into the pricing on, yeah. on, on both of the turnaround yeah. time too. Okay. That's yes. another thing. That, you know, both yeah. of them are gone right now. So, do you, are you looking for a motion? Yes, so that we make a motion to authorize Kim to uh, you can get the maps yeah. for the copy. Second, I'll second. Okay, discussion. All in favor, aye, aye, no, opposed. Okay, okay but that's oh, you're all set, and nothing yeah. anymore. Okay, no. public comment. We have any public comment? Okay, um, Bill, the town, the town attorney discussion. Um, you've got some letters and stuff, so I don't know where you are with it. Well, I could. If you just had a, a short executive session and you want to explain what, what, what we are right now. I didn't get the last letter, I got two letters. And I was, I was hoping that we I would have the letter from the third one. Should we wait to do the next meeting while we have all three rather than doing it again? Uh, maybe, but maybe. I mean, there's, there's no great rush here. I mean, well, well, yeah, as long as, I'll, as, long as uh, Robin keeps answering my phone. <laughs> Hmm. Well, what would you like to do? You want to go with exec and do with the two, or yeah. to try? I can just tell you where it stands. It take it take three minutes. I mean, I'm not okay. Yeah. Have a long discussion. Let's right. do executive okay. session. Get right. updated on what we got. Okay. All right. So before we do that, do we have any other business? Um, yes. Alan, we always do. Right. <laughs> I earned my thousand dollars. <laughs> um, Did you put your request in yet? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Time's not up yet. Um, the other day when we were, um, John and Danny and I met with, with the, and Bill met with the engineers, we were at the Howland Mill Bridge and uh, we got talking about the trucks coming out onto the road and looking along the edge of the road. We've got some bushes, trees, shrubs, stuff along in there that are in the, that have grown out into the road right away. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a policy or, or do we just send the crew down with a whacker and cut it? You know, how do, how do we deal with- I would send a letter to the landowner. Well, that's kind of, where, uh, that's kind of where I'm going with it. I would just send a letter saying what you're gonna do and I'll go do what we've done before, but. But it's within the right way, right? I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, but kind of common courtesy, I would say. And then if they don't come in, if they have a, if they have an objection, they can come in and be on the agenda or whatever, and, and then we can deal with it. But it needs to be dealt with, and not just for the logging. It's um, when when the power trucks are going up through there, those bushes are whapping on the power truck mirrors, and that happens to every truck that goes through there. And sooner or later, somebody's going to react to it, and they're going to swerve to the other lane. And be no, no, I, I think we should send a letter out to this individual. Uh, that's my first one. Okay. Um, my second one, um, I told you Danny and I were going to go to the um, municipal, uh, municipality meeting on Emerald Ashbor. Mm -hmm. Nobody else went, so we're going to share with you what we learned there. Um, based on the devastation that has occurred in the Midwest where Emerald Ash started. 
take, and Emerald Ash Borer kills all three ash that we have in Vermont. Green ash, black ash, and white ash. We should expect 99% of our ash trees in town to die based on what's happened in the upper Midwest. That's not a scare tactic, it's just this is what happened. That's what I saw coming across uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York. So it's reality. The thing that is interesting is they're finding when the trees die from this emerald ash borer, they get really brittle and they're not safe to cut with a, for a person with a helmet and a chainsaw. They require, so it, it increases the cost of cutting about three times. The, the other towns have, that have done surveys are finding in their town only counting the trees that are in right away, not counting the ones that are under power lines because Green Mountain Power will be responsible for those. But counting trees six inches in diameter and larger, that would be our responsibility as select boards. They're finding somewhere around 1,500 up to uh, 3,700 trees that will require cutting. Um, I think we ought to have some kind of a plan of how we're going to deal with it. If nothing we, else, that we set some money aside in an account. Um, I plan to go to the training session on uh, the 8th in uh, Rockingham. Um, the Department of Forests and Parks is putting on the training and they'll show how to, they have a program, they show how to do the inventory and uh, Suzanne and I have talked a little bit. We have some interest in the folks at the museum for some training um, to see if we can get some volunteers to help do, do the inventory. If nothing else, we ought to have um, some identification of priority. Um, you know, a dead ash tree on Hall Ranch that could be an inconvenience when the power comes out, but that's an entirely different situation where you have two families or three, depending on where, on the, on the road. That's an entirely different situation than dead ash trees in, in the village. Mm -hmm. And so we ought to set some priorities for, you know, the village, uh, 121, 35, mm -hmm. the valley, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and we should invest some time in this. Where where does the uh, tree warden fit the, the tree warden um, the tree warden in general or in the general. tree warden in Grafton? Well, in, in the tree warden in, in general, general, the tree warden um, has the authority <coughs> to to do uh, make the judgments of this tree goes, that tree uh, stays, that sort of thing. Settle disputes with the landowner. Um, there is a, a law that is proposed right now uh, to increase the uh, jurisdiction or, or authority that uh, uh, Tree Warden has. And if you read the VLCT, they, they were a little, um, I don't know what I want to say, but the, 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 I don't think VLCT showed appreciation to, to what, it was actually a law request that came from Forest and Parks. Mm -hmm. And Forest and Parks asked for uh, more jurisdiction for the, um, for the tree warden because they realized this is going to become a problem. And, and it's up to the individual towns to decide how they're going to respond. Well, I read that VLCT, and the, the, they were a little critical. Their issue was that it was uh, it was taking away the power of the selectmen, and then so that where the, the selectmen are in charge of the, of the roads and the right of ways, the tree warden could usurp the selectmen do what he wants to do without any authority. And that's where they were um, unhappy about. I, I, we appoint 
The select board appoints the tree. Yeah, board. So right. if you got a problem, you appoint a different tree. No, so. it, it was the, the legislation that you appoint him and he can do what he wants and you can't control it. That. that was the, that was their argument. Well, um, anyways, we need to we we need to invest some time and energy into this. Well, here's, here's my point: you can't put any money in because the budget's already done. So the question is, if this is going to be this. If this problem is going to be this big, it's going to affect every town in Vermont, not just Grafton, not yes. just Southern Vermont. The state is going to have to help us somehow. I mean, there's got to be some kind of money. But, but, to be put you, in. but you think you think the town doesn't have any money, therefore the state should help. I didn't but say the that. State, but the state doesn't have any money either, just because this problem happened. So, but the state had this. But I'm saying to you. Is that let's not rush into this thing. The, the ash borers are here and they're coming, but they're not here in, in the intensity that they are. So maybe this is something we have to deal with next year, you know, and when, when, when the select board sits down and does the budget, and maybe we need to give some of our legislatures so that some le legislation can be introduced, uh, and maybe there's some help from somebody. I mean, obviously, it, it's going to be a statewide problem, it's not just a town problem. It's in London there. It, they uh, did add that the federal government had already said if it is anything to do related to this Ash Emerald War, they will not fund it. Mm -hmm. said, right? That meet the class over there that they will not provide any money for grants or anything mm -hmm. already. If it has anything to do with it, because it's going to be so widespread that wow. they're not helping. And Al, you met, was you that mentioned that the towns have gone bankrupt dealing with this uh, issue? I, I didn't. I didn't mention it, but um, I saw that Green, but Green saw that someplace. I it think it was online. Oh, okay. Chris yeah, Campbell talked about it. Right. So, yeah. It's a lot cheaper to cut them down while they're structurally sound. Um, yeah. By the time you've noticed that they got this disease, it's already three to five years into it, so it's already too late. Yeah. yeah. Don't, it doesn't just show up instant though. The, the law that has been there three to five years once they, you actually see signs that it's dying. Right. Well, Alan, so I understand and I think we need to plan for it. Well, how do you want to handle this? Mm -hmm. well, I think we need to dedicate some time and, and get involved with it. Okay, but I mean, do we need to do an inventory so we know what we're dealing with? I mean, I think what, what maybe what you could do is put you and I mean, get somebody, whoever you want to work with, the museum or whatever, and, and, and get some kind of a plan that we can that we can start doing something with. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I I know what an estuary is, but I don't have any idea of how to go out and count them and whatever. And, and, and should go to the training session. Oh well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's what that's what um, Saturday session. Oh, hang on. Whoa, whoa. Come on, let's. Wait Hold on, hold on. Party. 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 Alan, Sorry. Um, so, the, on Saturday's training session, they're going to share with uh, the people that are there the program's already written. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can collect the data. But um, the town of Guilford uh, applied for a grant from Forest and Parks and they purchased uh, two uh, tablets and then they they split their um, volunteers up into groups and they work as little teams yeah. to collect the data. They, they had uh, 3,700 trees so far, six inches and over, and they're halfway through their survey. They have a little bit more roads than we do, but... Well, well, maybe what, after you attend all these, these, these you know, co conferences and know what we can do, then maybe we should have a committee or do put it on the agenda for March and, and figure out what we need to do as a town. I mean, it's, it's not going to go away. It's devastating. I mean, it's just like the elm and the chestnut all over again. And it's, it's, uh, it's something that I think we need to be proactive about as much as we can and be educate people. I mean, the woods are really, really important to us as a community. 
Well, we don't the, even the woods are one thing, and that's up to the individual landowner. Like, no, no, and that's not what I'm talking about. I, well, yeah, but I'm just talking about road right away straight yeah. down. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Which order um, for fire? The, the uh, um, uh, Pinnacle View Association is going to meet with GIA to uh, get permission. Pinnacle, they're, they're proactive and they want to do some hazard tree removal along the trail system, the hiking trail system. Mm -hmm. well, but we have the same situation. I don't know how many ash trees we have in the village park, mm -hmm. yeah. but as if, if we continue to renovate the park and put hiking trails in there and dead ash trees there, we need to be proactive as well so that we don't have any accidents. Mm -hmm. Well, we also have ponds too. Well, yeah, that's the wind. Yeah. That's, that, that title, so they have their own trees. Yeah. And I don't know whether we have uh, ash trees in the cemetery. That's another issue. Yeah. Well, that's why that's why I'm saying if you have an inventory, you can find out what you have and where they are, and you can uh, assign a priority. And there's going to be a higher priority where people are, whether it's in the village, whether it's in the, the park, whether it's in the cemetery. That's going to be different than. Out of my right. <coughs> so can you say again, Al, on um, the February 8th train, where it is and what time? It's at, it's at Rockingham uh, Library, and it's uh, from 10, 15 to 12, 30. It's on a Saturday, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's correct. And that's conducted by who uh, Department of Forest and Parks. They're uh, urban community foresters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other business? Mm -hmm. uh, I think I've got it all done. <laughs> all right, so the, the next, before we go to executive session, the next scheduled meeting is on February 17th at 6 o'clock here. And now we need a motion to go into executive session. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thanks for coming. Aye.